Do you have a question? Okay. Okay. Dinosaur. Okay. Dinosaur. Okay. Dinosaur. Oh, you want to play dinosaurs? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, okay. well, let's do that after Amen. this, okay? Right now, hear. please uh, incline your ears. Which means listen, have ears to hear and eyes to see what I'm about to tell you that Jesus says. You know, the most exciting parts of the Bible to me are the red letters because they're Jesus's words. And I love him so much, I just love to hear what he says. And so he tells these churches what he likes and what they need to fix. And so the first church is, was it the Loveless Church, right? The one that is the Loveless Church. So he tells them, you know, I've got all these things that you're doing great, all right? So you're out and you're helping the people. You are persevering. You're really pressing in and doing all these good things. Um, you do not tolerate evil. So they're like, nope, to evil. And so Jesus likes that. Um, they are good at discerning false apostles. So sometimes there were people that wanted to come into the church and teach a false doctrine. And so this body at the church recognized those people and were like, nope not having any of that and so Jesus really praised them for that but he says I have this against you you have lost sight of your first love do you know who our first love is God, God Jesus in particular but see I love that you said that because yes Jesus God is spirit and Jesus is God in man form he is totally man and totally God. That's why what he says, we should all just be like, hmm, captivated to. Like, I'm going to do what you say. You are my Lord. You are my first love. Now, that means two things. That means he loved us before he was born, but more, in, or before we were born, he knew you first. He loved you first. He loved you before your parents loved you. He loved you before anybody in this world loved you, but it means something even more. It means that he should be our priority, the thing we love the most above all else. And sometimes when we're doing all these good things and we think we're good, we're doing all this good, 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 and oh, no, bad, 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 I'm staying away from that. I'm going to go and I'm going to work here and I'm going to do all this, these good things. Sometimes that stuff can be a distraction that the enemy really likes to use you know you think you got it all together but really you are distracted from your first love the bible tells us to love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all of your strength so if there's anything here's the lesson are you listening are you listening good if there's anything that comes into your life that you put first that makes you forget about your lord Let's hear that conviction in our heart and just remember, don't put it before Jesus. Don't put it before the Lord. Okay, because he should be our first love, which means our priority. You know what priority is? You know what I mean? No. No? The thing you love first, that you love most. So if you had a choice, maybe, is this something that I want to do? You know, is it going to distract me from my Lord? Is this something that, like, um, the love of money, <coughs> maybe? A football. 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 And so I'm just saying, like, we can do all these great things, but the Lord wants us to remember that He's the reason we have those great things. Okay, so keep your priorities straight and keep your eyes on him. Keep him first in your life. You know, it's okay to like and do all these great things, but just don't forget him. Don't forget his place. He's first and then everything else. Okay? Awesome. All right, let us pray. We love you so much, Lord Jesus, and thank you. Thank you for these children, and thank you for being here with us. I ask you to guide their hearts, Lord to live in their hearts and, and show them your way so that they can make it back to you, your perfect way, Lord. And um, if they get off track, 
you know, please put someone in their lives, someone in their way as well to bring them back to you. We love you. We love your word. We thank you for your word. And please protect them, Lord. Please protect them from evil. Please protect them from sickness. And Lord, please protect them from harm. We love you. We exalt you. We bless your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, and I want to point out some guys in this room. When we were worshiping, uh, Josh, Matthew, Tyler, you guys are on my, on my heart. And the first thing I want to tell you guys is, is the goodness of God has been all around you your entire life. He, he has been completely waiting for you to come to him in a way that sometimes we go through things that we look back, look back at your life five, ten years ago and see the struggles that you've been through. Sam, you too. See the struggles that you've been through, but you see now why you are here today. You see now the things that he has kept you from. He's kept you from dying. Johnny Goodlow, he's kept you from dying. Sam, he's kept you from dying. Because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus says, no, they're mine. We've been through struggles and trials and losses and all these different things, but God is bringing you closer to him every day. Every one of you in this room, he's bringing you closer to him right now. All right, I'm going to read in the book of Revelation, chapter number 1, verses 1 through 20. And before I start, I'm going to explain this series. So the series is called Wake Up Church. And you guys know on Facebook, I have this hashtag, Wake Up Church. And the Lord has really brought this to me for, uh, it's been a couple months now. Um, I don't just use it to be cute. I use it because the Spirit of God is calling for people to wake up. To wake up to what's going on in this world, okay? Literally in this world that we live in. And also calling for people to wake up in their walk with Christ Jesus. And calling for people in general, everywhere that, that we speak, to be pulled out of religion. To stop playing church. To stop doing this thing to where it's like you just come to church because society says to. No, you come because you love Jesus. You come because of a relationship. And he's calling for people to stop playing it. To call upon the name of Jesus. Be saved. Right, Matthew? Be saved. And to be the church. We're called to be the church in a way that, that we go out in the community and we show others Christ inside of us. We show the light of Jesus working through us. And so the first part, the title of today is called Sense of Urgency. And that title is something that, guys, the titles that, that, that the Lord orchestrates through myself are not just mere words. These are things that I really feel like we need to listen to. And of course, it all ties in to the first letter to Ephesus. And we'll get into that in a minute. And so starting in the book of Revelation, chapter number one, and this is the unveiling of Jesus Christ. So this first, the scripture reading today is actually not the letter to Ephesus, which is in chapter two, verses one through seven. But this is painting. This is going to paint a frame around this entire series. So it's seven parts, seven letters. And I'll explain how these aren't just letters to mere churches, but these are actually letters to us. These are actually a picture of Jesus trying to speak to us and to wake us up, to wake us up to the church. All right, so starting in verse number one, and, and I'm reading in the Passion Translation, so yours might be a little bit different. Uh, but it starts off and it says, This is the unveiling of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to share with his loving servants. What must occur swiftly? He signified it by sending his angel to his loving servant, John, the apostle John, I, John, bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. A joyous blessing rests upon the one who reads this message and upon those who hear and embrace the words of prophecy. For the appointed time is in your hands. From John to the seven churches in western Turkey. May the kindness of God's grace and peace 
overflow to you from him who is and who was and who is coming and from the seven spirits who are in front of his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the first born from among the dead and the ruling king who rules over the kings of the earth. Now to the one who constantly loves us and has loosed us from our sins by his own blood. And to the one who has appointed us as a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion throughout the eternity of eternities. Amen. Behold, he appears within the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the people of the earth will weep with sorrow because of him. And so it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, am your brother and companion in tribulation, the kingdom and the patience that are found in Jesus. I was exiled to the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit realm on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice sounding like a trumpet saying to me, write in a book that you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. When I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands. And walking among the lampstands, I saw someone like the Son of God wearing a full-length robe with a golden sash over his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, white as glistening snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were gleaming like bright metal, as though they were glowing in a fire. And his voice was like the roar of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth was the sharp double-edged sword and his face was shining like the brightness of the blinding sun when i saw him i fell down at my feet as good as dead but he laid his right hand on me and i heard his reassuring voice saying and i want for y'all to think about him saying this to you don't yield to fear i am the beginning and the end the living one i was dead but now look i am alive forever and ever our king is alive and I hold the keys that unlock death in the unseen world. Now I want you to write what you have seen, what is, and what comes after the things that I reveal to you. The mystery of the lampstands and the seven stars in this seven lampstands are the seven churches. And the seven stars in my right hand are the seven messengers of the seven churches. That's the word of God. And so we see this and we see that this is Jesus speaking directly to us. He's saying right here, I want to read this again. I hold the keys to unlock death in the unseen world. If you're in here today, you don't know who Jesus Christ is. He holds the keys to heaven and hell. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. I want for you to know just how beautiful Jesus is. How we know that he went to the cross. But we know that he's no longer on that cross, is he? No. There's an empty grave and he's risen from the dead. The king is alive. And someday he'll come back to judge the world. And so I want to go back just a little bit and talk about wake up church. Guys, if you're in here right now. And, and you don't understand forgiveness. I want for you to understand this. Jesus, whenever he went to the cross, he completely forgave us for everything. Everything. And most of the time in our lives, we just keep running and running and running from the one who loves us the most. And all he wants us to do is stop, turn around, ask him for help. And to stop running from the one that loves us the most. Anybody can get up here and say, God, God, God. But what about Jesus? Jesus Christ is it. He is God incarnate. He is the only one that gives life and life more abundantly. He is the only 
way, but he is the way, and it's so beautiful to know. And so I'm just calling you guys. If you're in here today, right now, as I speak, if you're just in here just playing the game, just living in open sin, just doing all these things that are just completely counterfeit, the counterfeit pleasures from the devil are lies. They are complete lies from the pits of hell. But Jesus says, I will pull you out of that. I will clean you up. I will take care of you. And you will never, ever come out of the Father's hands. Ever. Because the plan of redemption says that sin came in. We live in a broken, sinful, corrupt world. That's why we have diseases. That's why we have all these things that people think are acceptable nowadays. But if the Bible says it's a sin, it's a sin. It doesn't matter what culture says. It doesn't matter what your friends say. Get away from those things. And come to Jesus because once you're born again, once you have the born again experience, you no longer want to live that way. But he's calling for us just to repent. And I'm going to explain repentance in a minute because I think there's kind of a little bit of confusion with some people. And just to come to him. Come to him. If you're listening online, if you're in this building today, just know that there's a secret. Okay, this big secret that with him is life, without him is death. But it's not merely the Bible says the the, the devil, the, the demons that they believe and they tremble. But it's have you experienced saving faith in Jesus Christ, and now He is your first love. All right, so Jesus is writing to Ephesus. And he says, write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Ephesus. For these are the words of the one who holds the seven stars firmly in his right hand. Who holds the seven stars firmly in his right hand? What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Somebody yell it out for me. Jesus. Who walks among the seven golden lampstands. And this is the, these are the words of Jesus. And again, this is to a church in Ephesus, which is in Asia Minor back in the day. But this is a picture of him speaking to individual Christians and their individual walks in the, in the body of Christ in general. And he says, I know all that you have done for me. He sees us from the inside out. We can't hide anything from him. Nothing. But we don't want to. We shouldn't want to. I used to be that way, guys. I, I had things I was doing, and I was like, I'm going to hide it, but we can't hide from a holy God. He doesn't want you to hide it. He wants you to give it to him. He wants you to lay it down. He wants you to say, please help me. He wants a relationship with him. So he says, I've seen everything you've done. You've worked hard, and you've persevered. I know that you don't tolerate evil. You've tested those who claim to be apostles and prove they are not, for they were important. I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name. Yet you have not become discouraged. Okay, so that's the first part. So the first part he's saying, he's giving encouraging words. Okay? Encouraging words. So I want to give you guys encouraging words in this church today. To know that the love of God. I know Matthew and Tyler, for example, and Brian. You guys have experienced the, the, the love of God like you've never, ever felt before, right? It was a mystery. It was something you didn't really know because you weren't brought up that way because we're born into sin. We're born not knowing who he is. When people say, well, I know who he is. I've been going to church all my life. But have you experienced the deep waters of Jesus, the living water of him? And whenever you do, you know what love is. And you can now love others the way that you have been loved deep down on the insides that you can't even speak about. There's a movie. You can't even speak about it at parties. You can't even speak about these things because you can't explain them. But that's the agape, supernatural love. Our God is supernatural, guys. And he wants us all to just trust him. You know, just to trust him. You know, it's funny. I, I make a joke. I, I preach to my family every week. You know, and and I'm their son and I have a twin brother and 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 I'm like up here just kind of hammering away. Right. What was the word yesterday? We went to a deal in La Mesa uh, and, and this lady pretty much gave me a prophetic word and it was stomp. And guys, do y'all realize that the devil is at our feet? He is at our feet and we're to stomp on his head. 
And we're to say, no, no, we belong to Jesus. He's king, he's Lord, devil has nothing here. And so I preached to my family and, and, and the stomping and the talking loud and the getting on the microphone and everything else. You know, my mom's back there and uh, never thought I'd ever do this up here, right? But that's what Jesus will do to your life. He will change you from the inside out to where I was at a point in my life where I didn't want to hear the name of Jesus. I didn't want to know who he was. It was, it was like, who is this guy, you know? But it shows a lot about a person if you can say Jesus, if you can say you love Jesus, if you can say that Jesus is my first love. That's what it's all about. And so the encouraging word to you guys, to you guys today is to know that Jesus loves you more than anything in this world. That's why he went to the cross. He didn't go to the cross for some people. He didn't go to the cross for you, but not you. He went to the cross for everybody Amen. to save us from ourselves and our sins and hell and everything because heaven and hell are real. We just had a park and pray. Here you go, Michael. Park and pray. Uh, we went, we were out there and uh, man, uh, we were just set up. We got a little street ministry we do and, and we were set up in the parking lot at uh, Los Casadores and, and myself and, and Mike here, we were up there in the parking lot and this old man and his son walked by. I don't know who he was. It might have been his son or grandson. I don't know. And and this man came up to me and, and, and I asked him, I was like, do you need, because we were up, we were set up to, to pray for him. And I said, do y'all need prayers? And he's like, everybody needs prayers. And I was like, okay. I could sense he was kind of being a little bit smart, you know, to me, like everybody needs prayers. And I'm like, okay. So do you need anything specific? And he's like, well, not really. He said, well, you know, my, uh, this, this young man here, the, the, this older man and the young man, we'll call him Juan and Jose. Jose is the younger one. And, uh, and, and he's telling me, well, because Jose, I, I believe he was born with some sort of a, a mental condition to where he can't really understand things very well. And um, he was telling me that I needed to pray for this young man. And I felt like God was saying, no, you need to talk to this guy. And so I told this old man, I said, sir, I believe I need to talk to you because he's wanting for me to pray over this other man. And, and so I started asking this, this older man about Jesus and if he knows who he is. And, and I read in John 14, 6 and and it says how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. And he says, oh, man. He's like, I don't believe in that. I, he said, I, I believe in God. But he's like Brahma and all these different other gods and stuff. And so I, I, I share with him about Jesus and, and, and salvation and different things. And, and uh, he keeps trying to avoid it. And eventually he walks away. Uh, but you can tell a lot by a person if, if they love the name of Jesus, if they, if they actually have a fire for him and, uh, or they run away. So if you're running away from the name of Jesus, you need a heart check. You need a heart check today. Yeah. All right. So continuing on with the letter to Ephesus. So he, he's saying all this stuff and he says, you've endured these things just like persecutions. You know, this, this moment at street ministry at the, at the park and pray was, was standing up for the faith, right? We're going to be put in positions to stand up for our faith. And are we going to stand up for it? Or are we going to let people be, be a certain way to us? We're called to stand up for it. And, and out of love, out of love and truth, out of love and truth. And so he says, but I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. And so for us in this room, you know, like me, guys, I, earlier this week I was going through stuff and I was just thinking about the first time I ever found out who Jesus was by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will only know who Jesus is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen on that amen. one? Amen. Because the Holy Spirit's job is to show us who Jesus is, to magnify him, to glorify him, to show him to ourselves and to the world. And if you listen to a man who's preaching and they don't magnify Jesus Christ, guys, be very, very weary of it. And I do that out of love because it's very, very deceptive, okay? The Jesus of the Bible. And so I, I go back and I would ask you today, right now, as you're sitting or listening, go back to that first moment, that, that time where you loved him so much, where you felt that love. And he's saying, come back to that way. He says, go back to that in your mind, in your memories, in the, in the intimate moments that you've, that you've seen to where you, you felt him. And the very next day after you woke up, you were like, I'm not the same. There's something different. And he wants you to go back and he wants for you to, to come to him and say that you need him, that, that you love him. 
that you're nothing without him. And he says, think about how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works of love that you did at first. And so repentance, and I want to paint a picture for you guys. So there's this big conversation in the world. I am not, I have not been to like, I'm not a, like a theological type of, but the Holy Spirit has shown me and I study the Bible and I know. And, and so some people on one side, and this is something to really, really pay attention to. There are these different, there are two sides that there's this division going on within the religious, within the people. And, and, there, and there's one side that says that repentance is a change of mind. And there's the other side that says, no, it's turning away from sins. It's a combination of both. It is a combination to where you're, you're, you, you finally understand who God is. And that repentance, the Bible says that it is granted from God. It is, it is given supernaturally, and it happens at the moment of salvation. It happens whenever you, you understand the gospel, you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You believe in the life and the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. And you turn away from those sins because he shows you that those sins are just lies. If you're in here today and you're like involved in a sin that is controlling your life and the devil is lying to you, those sins are just counterfeit pleasures. They're completely lies from the pits of hell. They're lies. And he's saying, turn away from those. And I will change your mind to the mind of Christ. When you're born again, you have the mind of Christ. To where now, like me, all I can do is just jump up and down about Jesus, right? Because I've been given saving faith in Jesus to where that seed has been firmly planted on good ground. And I live for Jesus and go with him. And so repentance, he's calling for them to repent. And since I'm speaking about this right now, he's calling for you guys to repent. And again, the devil hates the word repentance. Because that's why there's so much division with repentance and all these different things. Because it's like, no. But see, the beauty of it is, is that whenever we repent, whenever we say, Lord, help me. And see, this is another thing, too. The repentance comes in two ways, because of the goodness of God and also because of godly sorrow, because we see ourselves face to face with God. We see ourselves how Isaiah 6 talks about to where he just sees himself for who he really is. And, and, then, and then he turns around and he says, Lord, I need you. We all need him. We all need him. And I put out a message the other day called the cross. And, and I talked about how we have to admit that we're wrong in this life. Okay. So we're born wrong, but Jesus makes us right. Adam made us wrong, but Jesus makes us right. And if somebody's not willing to admit that they're wrong in this life, then they're not going to be able to go to heaven because no prideful person is going to heaven. The devil was kicked out of heaven because of pride. But see, Jesus will humble us. He will give us a new heart, a new mind, a new way, and show us exactly who he is and what it's all about. The other day I was reading in uh, Acts 2024, and I'm going to turn to this really quickly. This right here is what it's all about for me. Acts 20, 24, and this is the Apostle Paul speaking. But whether I live or die is not important, for I don't esteem my life as indispensable. It's more important for me to fulfill my destiny and to finish the ministry my Lord Jesus Christ has assigned to me, which is to faithfully preach the wonderful news of God's grace. I live for Him. And whenever you're saved, just like some of you guys in the room that have recently... You've been, maybe you've been saved for 10 years or five years or, or a week or two. Jesus wants for you to go with him. He doesn't want for you to look back. He doesn't want for you to look back at the things of the world. He wants for you to focus on him and to live as though he is, which he is living through you. My favorite phrase, and I use it a lot, is the cross is before us, the world is behind us, and we follow Jesus. We follow him so fervently, so fervently. And so to finish up with this letter, it says, Although to your credit you despise the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also despise. 
The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying to all the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will give access to feast on the fruit of the tree of life that is found in the paradise of God. And so it explains about the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans were these, these guys that wanted to force everything on them, religious type of things and different things. And he's saying, that's not what it's about. Guys, this church that God is building up right now, we're going to face persecution because we're not doing things the way that the world likes. We're not doing things the way the devil likes. And so persecution comes in because the devil, the other day I saw a quote, Charles Spurgeon said, it's, it's amazing how precious a soul is that God and the devil are both fighting over that soul. The devil is fighting for your soul right now because he wants to take you to hell. But Jesus is saying, no, I want you to come to me. But the devil is real. He is so real. And he wants to destroy families. He wants to destroy our lives, our own walks with Christ. But Jesus says, all you have to do, Romans 10, 9, call upon the Lord. Call upon him to repent and say, Lord, I need you in my life. I need for you to help me. I need for you to help me. And I believe specifically there's people in this room as I speak right now. That he's calling you right now to repent and believe in him and to know that he is it. There's a sense of urgency in this air because, guys, December of 2019, I was saved. He called me to pastor quick. The Bible says Jesus is coming quickly. I believe Jesus is coming very quickly. And I believe that he wouldn't be giving me what I have inside of myself as a still a baby, basically a brand new Christian to tell you that there's a sense of urgency I was a man who was living in sin, who was a horrible person because I didn't know who Jesus was. But he will save any one of you in here. He will take that pain away. You might have pain in your heart. You might have guilt or shame or things that you think you have to do on your own. And he's saying, you don't have to do it on your own. He's saying, give it to me and I'll take it from you. Give it to me and I will release you from that pain. Because the sense of urgency in the air says that Jesus any day, any day can come back and get his church. And if you're born again from the spirit above, if you have no doubt in here that the Holy Spirit is inside of you and you are sealed for an eternity, you're going to be taken up with him forever whenever he comes and gets us. But if you are living a life right now to where you're just trying to trust in yourself, just live the best life now, whatever BS that you're hearing in the world, is alive from the pits of hell. Because those left behind are going to have to face the Antichrist in this world in terror, in complete heartache. But Jesus says, if you call upon me, if you believe in me, I will take you out of that. I will take you out of that. And also, we don't know when we're going to pass away. We all have this flesh that eventually our number is going to be called and we're done. But Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. And so I would ask you today, is Jesus your first love? Is Jesus your first love? Huh? It's pretty silent in here. Yes. 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 Jesus is it. He is it. And there's a sense of urgency, the sign of the times, guys. That there, there are global agendas right now in this world that are being set up for the rise of the Antichrist. And that is the God's honest truth. But he says, do not fear. For I have overcome the world. And when you're in Christ Jesus, we have no worries. We were not given a spirit of fear. Right now, there's this, there's this virus going around that is scaring everyone to death. And he's saying, no, trust me. Have faith in me. Faith over fear. Because fear will destroy you and make you to where you feel like you, you can't be around somebody. We... That to where we can't be around families and we can't be around people because we have this. And yeah, use your head. 
but it's designed by the evil forces that control this world. The devil is the God of this world that we live in right now. That's why when you're born again, you're set apart. You live in two domains, the natural and the heavenly. We sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Right now, if you are born again, if you know without a doubt who you are in Christ, you are set apart. We are the bride of Christ. Right now, the bride is being cleansed. We're being cleansed. We are being, he's getting us ready for his return. Because someday the father is going to lean over to the son and he's going to say, son, go get your bride. And if you're not a part of the bride, you're going to be a part of the Antichrist scheme and everything that's set up in this world. And I don't tell you this to scare you. I tell you this because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says it all. But the love, the first love, where is the love? Do you love him? Can you honestly say today that you love him? That you know who he is? The, it further on goes in, in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4, it continues on. Sorry, guys, I'm talking a lot today. It continues on and says that the devil blinds the minds of the unbelievers. And I speak against that today. If any of you in this room are blinded by the devil, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes up. If you believe in Jesus... If you believe in him, he will open them up to his glory. I don't hear lately. I believe Matthew, for example, has seen the glory of Jesus Christ. Right. He has seen that glory toward now. You know that he is it. We search this life looking for answers. We're given a Jesus shaped heart. We fill it with all these things in the world. Alcohol, drugs, sex, pornography, all these idols. And Jesus said, no, that stuff's going to work. It's not going to work. I'm the only thing that can fill that Jesus-shaped hole in your heart. And so he's calling us all closer to him. You might be in this room. You might have been saved a while back. The Lord is calling you to repent. He's calling you to get closer to him because things, we don't know how bad things are going to get. And I'm going to be up here talking about persecution and suffering and everybody's going to leave. But that's what the Bible says. Jesus suffered unto death. We're going to deal with it, but the Holy Spirit will give us the inner peace on the inside that passes all understanding. For example, I'll be Tyler, I believe you have an inner peace on the inside of you, brother, that you can't explain, that you didn't have before. And it's something that will keep us from the depths of pain and agony. But Jesus says to not worry. Because the one that is inside of us, the one that is in you, is greater than the one that is in this world. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so I'll end it with this. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to get on your knees out of the goodness of God. Did y'all listen to that song, Evidence by Josh Baldwin? That song right there. He's been watching you your whole life. He's been right there with you your entire life. And he's taking care of you up to this moment. He's taking care of you up to this moment. You might even sit here today. You might not even be saved. But he's saying, son, daughter, come to me. Come to me and I'll show you just how good I am. I'll show you just how much this first love really is. How much it means. And so the gospel the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Believing two factors that the world wants to argue the most. Jesus is God and Jesus rose from the dead. Period. Yeah, we can't understand with our human minds, right? That's why our God is supernatural. He performs miracles. He is the answer. He's the answer. So the sense of urgency says that Jesus is calling us to our knees. He's calling us to press near to him, to look at that old wooden cross over there and to say, Lord. Sometimes I look at it and I almost like have a picture of of him on that cross. Guys, you all realize what he went through for each and every one of you. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guys, there's a lot of different ways, you know. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable like talking to me now, come find me later, you know. 
Uh, we're going to have a response to the word and then we're going to have we're going to have a Lord's Supper before our potluck and kind of lead into that. So we'll kind of just filter through and then we'll go uh, in there and eat and stuff. And I would just tell you that that uh, you got nothing to worry about. Um, like we're, we're all born guilty, but we're forgiven. But once we understand that we're forgiven, will we not understand the gospel? We don't have to hide anything. There's nothing that, that you have to hide in here at all. You don't have to hide anything. I don't want anybody leaving today that questions their salvation, that questions their walk with Christ. You know, and there might be some backsliders. There might be people in here that might not be really sure. And I would just tell you that he just wants you to call out on his name and, and ask him for help. Ask him for help. So during the call to worship, guys, uh, if you want to come up, if you just want to pray at the altar, guys, it's open. I'm going to move these steps. I think it's clean under there now. I'm going to move these steps. And uh, y'all saw the beautiful stain right there in the carpet, right? I might as well call it out. Uh, I'm going to move these steps. And if you guys want to come up and worship on your knees or, or whatever, or if you, if you really just want to talk to the Lord. See, our Heavenly Father, He's just like our, imagine your real father. He's just like your real father, but like he's so much better. And he wants to hear from his children. So are we talking to our daddy? Are we talking to him? Or are we just kind of doing our own little deal in this life? God wants a relationship. It's relationship, not religion. So y'all are invited to come up and, uh, and we'll go from there, guys. But I, I love each and every one of you. God bless you.